Okay, so here's the Seagull Nebula loaded into Photoshop um, from Astro Pixel Processor. Still needs some tweaking. Obviously, the stars are are very heavy in this image, and while you've got good presence of the nebula, I'd like to make that pop a little bit more. So we're going to apply a minimum filter. There's also some artifacts throughout this. I don't know if you can see them or not. But there's some artifacts here and there. We'll clean up. We'll make that nebula color pop a little bit more, and all that good stuff. So let's let's get started. First, we're going to duplicate the layer. And honestly, what I'll probably run this time at first is this enhanced DSO and reduce stars. Um, this is a plugin called Astronomy Tools, and it is you can Google it, it's worth every bit of I think it was like 15 or 20 bucks. It's got a lot of good built in actions in here. It's this action set, but this one is, is especially good. So let's go ahead and play that one out. And what it will do is it'll it won't do a huge deal on reducing the stars. It does reduce them a little bit, but it really helps bring out that nebula even more so. And just kind of entering through each of these steps here. It's almost done. Look at the before and after. Boom. Look how much more. It dimmed down the stars a little bit. It does soften slightly but it does bring out that nebula more too, so I kind of like that. Let's dial back these stars. They, there is a tremendous amount of stars in this, so let's go to Color Range under the Select tab, Highlights, crank that up. That should be okay right there. Here we go. We're going to expand the selection to include those, all of those other little stars. So Modify, Expand. Let's expand that by two. There we go. And then modify one. Or sorry, select modify feather one pixel. There we go. And now let's pull up control H, let's hide that selection. And let's pull up the minimum filter. Filter other minimum. That's better, but honestly I'll probably go a little higher. Let's go to two and see what that does. Okay. I think that's more more like it. See the difference? Look at that. Here it is without the minimum with really dials back those stars tremendously. Alright, now that's starting to pop. Let's flatten that out. I want to do another little crop here. There's still some artifacts in the corners of this frame. So let's crop those out. Just a slight crop here. I don't wanna actually I don't wanna lose that star right there like that. Okay. Let's bring this up a tad. Just a little bit of a there we go. Okay. So let's look at levels. Because I'm thinking that slider can be brought back a bit. Yep. So let's bring that back to right about there under levels. That's good. Let's flatten that out. And time to pull up camera raw filter. Okay. Let's first deal with the noise. And it's not horrible, but it's there. A little bit of luminous noise. That cleaned up nicely. And the color noise. There we go. Alright. And now let's go back to this tab. The main tab right here, the basic function tab. Um, exposure is good, data is where it needs to be, but there's definitely some vibrance and texture stuff we can work on here. Let's start with texture. So the more I increase that, the more those stars pop, but it also makes it a little crazy. So, same with the clarity. That nebula pop more, but so will the stars. See that? and blows them out too. Same with dehaze. There's all the way up. Thinking somewhere right about there. 
a little more of a color. Let's go vibrance boost on this one. The colors got muted out a good bit on the color calibration, so. Let's back that out and take a look. Okay, that's starting to look better. That is about it on here. We've taken care of the noise. We do some sharpening for sure. It is a little soft. And there's some artifacts I gotta clean out of this too, but. And this was only 30 frames, so um, would have been a lot cleaner with the 60, but you know, you take what you can get. And you don't want to go too crazy with the sharpening because then you're just reintroducing noise right back into the picture. I don't think I'm going to mess with that. Just back out of that a bit. Okay, let's see how that looks. Here we go. All right before and after. Now, a little crop here. There we go. Uh, this, I still, for my taste, the stars are just going nuts here. They've just gone nuclear. So, but let's flatten this out first. Control J. And let's do another minimum pass on this thing. Modify. Same deals before. Expand the selection by two. Let's see if that's enough to draw those back. They need to expand that a little bit more. Let's go two more. There we go. Okay. Let's feather it. Control H and let's pull up that minimum filter one more time. I may want to go back that off a little bit. Don't want to overdo it. Just just dials it back a little. You see that? Let me zoom in some so you can see. Before, after. Just dims them down just a touch more. There we go. And let's change the image size here. Let's go 16 by 10 at 300 dpi. Okay. Now, at this point, it's really any other adjustments are to taste, I think. Uh, we got accurate star color. Um, the reds are a little subdued still for my taste. Uh, I would probably go into hue saturation here. Do this the old fashioned way. And just go into the reds and yellows and boost those a little more. Not crazy, but. Go a little more red. There we go. See that from the orange to the, the red side a little bit. Don't want to go nuts with it, but let's see. Maybe something like that. Looks a little more appealing. But we're going to change this to a color layer, alright? And to reduce the noise impact. We're just going to do a Gaussian blur of two pixels, okay, to blur out the noise impact, and then we're going to do a curves adjustment, a minor curves adjustment up top. 128, 128. You want these to read 128, 128 in the middle, and then click OK. And that adjusts that color. There we go. That's much better. Instead of an orange, it's actually more red now. Now, if you wanted to get real picky with it, you could create a mask around the seagull and or select the stars select inverse and then that way the stars aren't affected because it did slightly change the color of the stars too but I think that is probably all I'm gonna do to this guys and let's just take a look here at what happens if I do a stretch I, I don't think there's a whole lot more to stretch out of this there's only 30 frames Yeah, I mean, you're just blowing it out. You do an S-curve. 
that's just that's horrible <laughs> that's horrible it's a little subdued but could brighten it a little bit we could play around with the um, I'm gonna save this as it is though I like this right here save this as a tiff and we're gonna change that to PCC and we're gonna save this in edited the edited folder okay now that I've done that let's just play around the only other thing I might do on this see if I can get a little more pop using the um, HDR toning now for starters you want to dial back exposure not to that point though maybe right about there highlights dial the highlights back so it don't blow out those stars and I can bring the exposure slider up a little bit okay gamma kinda like that actually that's really making that nebulosity pop well guys that concludes the video if you like what you saw if you enjoyed it felt like you got something out of it please like and subscribe be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos that'll cover more tutorials imaging sessions and gear until next time clear skies <laughs>